So let's take a look at another case where we have sp2 hybridization. We can actually also have it happen in carbon. So if we think about having it happen in carbon, we're starting with this situation where we've already promoted our electron into a 2p orbital here. And what we're going to do is just combine the s and two of the p's. So we'll end up with electrons in one of each of three 2sp2 hybrid orbitals. But unlike the case with boron, where we had an empty p orbital, we're actually going to have a, an electron in the p orbital of carbon as well. So again, if we think about that shape of that carbon atom, it's going to be trigonal planar. It's going to have bond angles of 120 degrees because we have this setup of having three hybrid orbitals. So let's take a look at what actually happens. If we're talking about a carbon-carbon double bond, such as in ethene, C2H4, we're going to have a double bond. If we have a double bond, we know we need to have only one sigma bond, and we're also going to have one pi bond. So it already should make sense why we have that p orbital there. In order to form a pi bond, we're going to need a p orbital. So if you picture this as our sp2 carbon atom, where we have three hybrid orbitals and then one uh, py orbital coming right out at us. So again, we picture the same thing as we pictured with the boron there. If we have, coming along the z-axis, another carbon atom, we can actually form one bond between the two carbon atoms there. So if we picture how this happens, what we have here, if these are our two sp2 carbon atoms, and let's see how quickly I can move these models around. So here we have sp2 hybrid carbon. And here we have sp2 uh, hybrid carbon atom. These two are going to come together like this. And the first bond that we're going to form is going to be a sigma bond, right? So we see that here. If we're looking head on, we see they form a sigma bond. We can also look at them coming in from the side. And that's what I tried to depict here, where you can actually see in pink is the p orbital. So we can also show them coming together this way. So now you're looking at it where you can see the p orbital and maybe just see well one of the hydrogen atoms. So uh, we can have four total hydrogens bonding here. And we can think about how to describe these carbon-carbon bonds. So in the first case of this first bond here that I've put in a square, what type of a bond is this? Is this sigma or pi? Sigma. Yep, it's a sigma bond. We're having two orbitals coming together on the bond axis. So we'll call this sigma, and it's between two sp2 hybrid carbon atoms. So it's sigma carbon sp2 carbon sp2. What about this second bond here where we're going to have uh, interaction of two p orbitals? Is that sigma or pi? Pi, great. So our second bond is going to be a pi bond. And again, this is between the p orbitals. These are not hybrid orbitals. So when we name this bond, we're going to name it as a pi bond here, because it's between two p orbitals. And it's going to be between the carbon 2py orbital and the other carbon 2py orbital. Remember, we didn't hybridize the 2py orbital, so that's what we have left over to form these pi bonds. All right, so in addition to having these two carbon bonds, we actually also have uh, four carbon-hydrogen bonds in addition to our carbon-carbon bonds. So why don't you tell me what the valence bond description would be of these carbon-hydrogen bonds? So let's take 10 seconds on that. OK, great. So most of you got it. So we can switch the notes and let's talk about this here. So uh, in terms of the carbon-hydrogen bond, it's a sigma bond because we define it at any time we are bonding to an atom, we have to keep redefining our bond axis to whatever two atoms we're talking about. So it's along the bond axis, and it's between a carbon sp2 hybrid, and then the hydrogen is just a 1s orbital that we're combining here. So those are our three types of bonds in ethene.